We're going to call to order the January 20, 2024 regular board meeting. And do we have any nope. public nope. comments? Nope. No, comment. okay, we'll, we'll adjourn into closed session. Thank you. We are going to reconvene our January 18th, 2024 regular meeting of the Board of Education. Is your mic on? Is your mic on? I believe it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, first thing we'll do is the Pledge of Allegiance. We have. What's that? There you go. Okay. We have the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, writer Goosen will be leading us today. Please stand, caps off, and whatever accessory you have. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge I allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, you may be seated. Thank you, writer. <laughs> She's ready. I'm ready. I'm excited. Okay. First thing we'll do is roll call. Everyone is here, and we have a. Good to go. Okay. All right. And let's do the reports out of a closed session. Okay. In closed session, the board considered dismissal charges against a classified probationary employee and took action to approve those charges and release employee number 610558 by vote of 5 to 0. Additionally, we have in the closed session, the board considered dismissal charges against a classified probation employee and took action to approve those charges and released employee number 660476 by a vote of 5-0. Also in closed session, the board took action to ratify the appointment of Cheryl Cortez as Central Elementary School Principal beginning January 8th, 2024, through June 30th, 2024, by a vote of five to zero. Good evening, President Houston, board, and Dr. Ibarra. My name is Sherelle Cortez. Tonight is a special night as I am extremely honored to accept the position at Central Elementary Principal. I am going, I am coming from, t um, EU I am coming to ESD, EUSD, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> from Paris Elementary School District and look forward to personally getting to know all students, staff, and community of my new school. As principal, it is my sincere goal to work with the central team to provide an excellent educational experience for students, lead the school with grace, and build relationships with families and the community. Thank you for the opportunity to join the EUSD family. Congratulations. Okay. And lastly, in the matter of, uh, of anticipated litigation, claim case number 23-24-01, the board voted to reject the claim by a vote of five to zero. And that is everything out of closed session. 
Moving on to C5, approval of the agenda. Motion to approve agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 5 0. <laughs> <laughs> C6, approval of the minutes. Move approval of the minutes of the board meeting of December 12th, 2023. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have approval 5 0. Okay. D1, recognition. Okay. Well, we are excited to be able to celebrate our students this evening with our SE Awards, our Student Excellence Awards. And so again, we have uh, some administrators from our school sites that are here to share a little bit of information about their school, as well as uh, the selection of their Student Excellence Awards recipients. So we're going to begin and invite up from Del Dios Academy of Arts and Sciences, Assistant Principal Carla Gibbs. You all know how excited I was because I was <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> thank you so much, President Houston. Thank you, board members. Thank you, Dr. Ibarra, and thank you, Cabinet. I am so excited to be here representing Del Dios Academy of Arts and Sciences and to tell you about some of the wonderful things that are happening at our school. I believe we have prepared a slideshow. Yeah? Okay, are we ready? So at Del Dios, Every student is a critical thinker. Students in math intervention class analyze their work and they correct their mistakes. We actually have students saying things like, I've learned that my mistakes help me learn. It's okay to be wrong. In our art classes, art students reflect on their progress and they implement teacher and peer feedback to blossom as artists. At Del Dios Academy of Arts and Sciences, all our students are empowered learners. For example, in robotics, students are using Ozobots in an engaging way to learn how to code, but also to take the prior knowledge that they have learned and apply that knowledge to solving new problems. In our band class, students are encouraged to take risks by choosing their musical path. And at Del Dios, every student is a creative problem solver. Students have created their own flashcards to prepare for upcoming assessments, just as one way to get ready. They have so many different ways and they're choosing to make some flashcards. Students are creatively designing bridges with the hopes that their bridge design will support the maximum weight. That, that student group that you have up there their bridge held the most marbles and they were so excited because they were able to take the knowledge that they're learning and really implement it. So we're very excited about the work that we're doing at Del Dios. And with that, I'd like to share with you about some of our students who are doing an excellent job and are going to be our Student of Excellence recipient award winners. First up, I'd like to call Ryder Goosens, our sixth grade student, to come on up. I want to tell everyone that Ryder works hard on everything he does and he strives to do the best that he can, exemplifying his tremendous capabilities. He reflects on his skills and how he can improve every day. He does a great job on helping others when they need it, even providing reminders when needed and cleaning up the classroom without even being asked. Ryder truly exemplifies all characteristics that make him an excellent student. Now we'll see Dr. Ibarra. I'd like to present to you all Aubrey Kelly. Aubrey, come on up. Aubrey Kelly is the epitome of dragon character. Her bright, friendly, and energetic energy is equally matched by her high quality of her academic work and her leadership skills. She always brings a positive, collaborative spirit and vibe to her small group assignments, and she regularly volunteers to share and present. Aubrey is a role model for her classmates and a gift to her teachers. 
Del Dios is lucky to have her as one of our own. And last, but definitely not least, I'd like to call up Lovely Gutierrez. Lovely, come on up. <laughs> lovely truly lives up to her name. Her lovely personality and dedication to learning make her a clear winner for the Student Excellence Award. Lovely is the embodiment of empathy. She takes the golden rule to heart, treating every classmate with respect and kindness. All of Lovely's teachers appreciate her easygoing and positive demeanor because it so easily permeates throughout the classroom and the halls. She exudes kindness in a way that makes it easy for her peers to reciprocate. With Lovely here, Del Dios is a more welcoming, compassionate, and empowered learning environment. All right, and next we'd like to invite up the principal of Glenview Elementary, Principal Julio Lopez. Good evening, uh, President Hudson, Cabinet, Dr. Ibarra, uh, board members. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to highlight some of the great happenings at Glenview. I would also like to thank the parents and the staff members that are in attendance here from Glenview and everywhere else. Thank you so much. Without uh, their support, Glenview simply wouldn't be what it is today. Uh, Glenview is a school with 588 eager learners. 249 of our Gators take part in our dual language program. Students at Glenview are multi-talented. At any given day, you can walk into a classroom and find students practicing their Spanish reading skills, mastering a new math concept, fine-tuning their ability to play an instrument, and applying their program, their problem-solving expertise during a PBIS uh, lesson. Furthermore, Glenview's culture is one of excitement and lifelong learning. Our ASP students play a major role in modeling the positive school culture. This year, our school is working in collaboration with the BCK Environmental Education to help the city of Escondido reduce waste, giving our students another opportunity to apply their problem-solving skills in real-life scenarios. Lastly, our school enrichment programs help extend our students' excitement for learning by offering classes such as Ballet Folklorico, Lego League, and Art. Now I would like to present our out outstanding gator Gators. I would like to ask uh, Kathy, fourth grader Kathy Newen to come in, please. Kathy is a critical thinker. She is always on task and always looking for an academic challenge. She uses her critical thinking skills to answer higher level thinking questions across all subjects. Her academic achievements are a reflection of her exceptional test scores. We are proud Kathy is a Glenview Gator. <laughs> Now
Now I would like to invite uh, fourth grader Jaden Varona. Jaden is a creative problem solver. It is incredible how he can find multiple ways to solve math problems. For example, he uses place value, area model, and division, just to name a few. He is also a creative problem solver by being one of our core members of the environmental education program at our school. He is convinced that our actions will help create a better environment. The future looks bright for you, Jaden. And now I'm going to ask fifth grader Christopher Quintero to please come on up. Christopher is an example of a Glenview empowered learner. Chris has accomplished so much this year due to his passion for learning. He is the a ASB president, an integral part of Glenview's Lego League, a band member, the fifth grade mayor during our BizTown field trip, and a member of Glenview's uh, STEM challenge team. His drive for learning and empowering himself and others is so evident to all of those around him. He, is even, he even continues his learning at home, whether it's watching Discovery Channel or creating a building with Legos. He is a true example of what an empowered learner looks like. And next, we'd like to invite up the principal of Juniper Elementary, Brooke, Brooke Cottingham. Good evening, Board President Houston and the USD Board members, Dr. Ibarra and Cabinet. I am excited to recognize three outstanding Jaguars from Juniper Elementary, as well as share the amazing work being done by our Juniper staff and students. I'd first like to recognize and thank the Juniper staff and parents who are with us tonight to celebrate these incredible students. We are truly lucky to have such an amazing school family that comes together to support our Jaguars. Staff and parents, thank you for being part of your students' educational journey. Juniper Elementary School is a school that focuses on students' opportunities to support each other in our school community through building positive relationships, getting involved in activities outside the classroom, and learning to their full potential. Our mission at Juniper states, the Juniper community will inspire students to build respectful relationships while creating a safe, peaceful, and rigorous learning environment. We live this commitment in every classroom, in every lesson, and our beliefs that every student can be successful. At Juniper, every student is an empowered learner. Juniper students stand out as individuals who embody curiosity, self-direction, resilience, and a growth mindset. Our students pursue knowledge through real-world challenges. In our STEM wheel, students combine physics and math to create structures to withstand pressure and to keep Humpty Dumpty from falling over the wall by using balance with trial and error. Juniper students also seek solutions as they persevere through challenging math problems and take risks as part of their learning journey. At Juniper, every student is an empathetic collaborator. At Juniper, being an empathetic collaborator is not only about working together, it's also about actively listening and recognizing the value that each voice brings in the pursuit of a common goal. 
Each day, Juniper students get opportunities to practice being empathetic collaborators. They do this through group projects and after school enrichment activities through our robust ELOP program, where over 150 students participate in actively pursuing their interests beyond the classroom. As you can see in the pictures, our Juniper students come together to solve complex math problems using math tools and learn to play chess, one of our most highly sought after after school programs. Other ELOP programs include Ballet Folklorico, Monet Art, Rugby, which is new to our school this year, Soccer, Dance to Evolve, and Girls on the Run. Our ELOP program allows our students to actively engage with each other and honor our own experiences through that collaborative environment. At Juniper, every student is an effective communicator. Juniper students are learning to actively listen for understanding and express their own ideas with clarity. At the beginning of each school year, students in fourth and fifth grade can run to be an ASB officer who represents all of our students in pursuing positive changes to our school community. This year, we had a record 20 students rise to the challenge. They gave compelling speeches expressing their desire to represent their fellow students. They spoke about school spirit, school-wide activities, and ways to show kindness to others. We also practice communication skills through drama and dance classes with a shared learning experience. I would now like to introduce to you my three Student Excellent Award recipients. I would like to call first Helen Hernandez. <laughs> Helen Hernandez has been attending Juniper Elementary since TK. She has grown a lot in her years here at Juniper, not only in her academics, but in her leadership and the collaboration with those around her. She is an empowered learner and takes it upon herself to strive to reach her full potential, complete all her assignments, and reach goals that she sets for herself. As an ethical scholar, she's a great leader at Juniper, stepping in as captain for our safety patrol team and a newscast member of our Pause for the News. She keeps morale strong in class by showcasing she's an empathetic collaborator who wholeheartedly lives the Jaguar way. She leads by example, and she is a true champion of heart, mind, and soul. Congratulations, Helen. I would now like to call up Lucia Vasquez. We fondly call her Lucy. Lucy has been a Juniper Jaguar since TK. Each year she is a ex shining example of an empathetic collaborator as she eagerly volunteers to work with peers both in and outside the classroom. She is a priceless and dependable teacher helper. As a fifth grader, Lucy is not only an active cl classroom participant who demonstrates a desire to learn, but also a leader on our campus. She participates in Pause for the News, helping to keep our community updated on the latest happenings. And as an ethical scholar, she participates in a variety of after-school enrichment activities. Most recently, she was a pirate in A Pirate's Christmas. In addition to successfully accomplishing all of her assignments, she is respectful to peers and teachers, dependable, responsible, and strives to make Juniper the safe place it is. She is a role model for all of our Jaguars. Congratulations, Lucy. All right, and I would like to call up Caitlin Hernandez. Caitlin Hernandez has also been a Juniper Jaguar since TK, and she has been practicing the Jaguar way every step of her journey. This year, she blossomed into a role model for all of our Jaguars. She's one of our Kinder Safety Patrol captains, and being the creative problem solver that she is, she directs her teammates to different places on the classroom where Safety Patrol students are able to guide our Kinders in safe play. She takes this responsibility very seriously. Caitlin is also a member of the Pause for the News broadcast crew. Her ad libs and her enthusiasm make her an effective 
communicator, which in turn helped draw all Jaguar viewers from all over the school. Caitlin's academics are also strong because she approaches them like she approaches everything else with the mindset of an optimist and an empowered learner. This mindset leads her to encourage others, be a helper in the classroom, and be a positive, you can do it, role model to all. Congratulations, Caitlin. All right, moving forward, we're going to go to the recognition of the class of 2023 National Board Certified Teachers. All right, well, good evening. Tonight, we want to recognize some of our amazing EUSD teachers who have achieved National Board Certification. National Board Certification was designed to develop, retain, and recognize accomplished teachers and to generate ongoing improvement in schools nationwide. It is one of the most respected professional certifications available in K-12 education. These individuals have participated in a rigorous process of creating a portfolio that includes action research, examining their practice through looking at student work, data, and videotaping themselves. And all of this was done with the support and mentorship of three of our other outstanding professionals, Brenda Heil, Katie Maskowitz, and Harriet Sibley, if they could just quickly stand so we can <laughs> recognize them. And so we want to go ahead and take uh, the time here to recognize our two new National Board Certified EUSD teachers. We'll begin Catherine Lyon, third grade teacher from Felicita Elementary. And also I'd like to invite up Misty Spencer, first grade teacher from LR Green. We're gonna have a group picture. Moving on, we're going to go to public comments, and I believe we have none. A break. A break. A break. Okay, yeah. you can take a five-minute break. We'll be back at. Yeah. <laughs> yes.
by Zoom? Hmm? No, they stopped doing that. I think they need to Oh, oh. Because people doubled up, you know, and watched it. I'm going to see at least two eyes. Don't be afraid to use that gavel. <coughs> All right, we're going to return back to the meeting. Okay. E1, public comments, and we have none. Moving on, any public hearings, none. Uh, report from the California School Employees Association's Chapter 150. No, Emmy. is my first meeting so I'm very excited. Uh, good evening esteemed board and cabinet members. I am humbled and honored to have the opportunity to address uh, you as a newly appointed president of CSEA. I would like to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude to Rick Beebe for his unwavering support and dedication to both CSEA and this district. Yeah. Yeah. Rick's departure has left the void that will be difficult to fill, but we are committed to carry forward his legacy and continue his hard work. This year, we have an amazing group of new and continuing eBoard members. Our team includes Mireya Barajas as VP1, Denise Mino as VP2, Debbie Pierce as Treasurer, Katie Chapman as Secretary, Teresa Reyes as Chief Union Steward, Jessica Torres as Communications Officer, Josh Stevens as Webmaster, and Rick Beebe as past president. I'm looking forward to working with this dedicated and talented group of individuals to accomplish great things. Classified staff, rest assured that our commitment is unwavering and we will continue to work tirelessly to uphold the mission of CSEA, which is to improve the lives of members, students, and community. Tonight I say to you, you are essential and I'm in. Thank you. Thank you. Triple EA, Brandy. The microphone's too high. <laughs> Good evening, President Houston, school board members, cabinet, Dr. Barr. Thanks again for our meeting earlier today. It was really great to be open and out there for you. Um, I wanted to say I went to Bear Valley today and it was super awesome because their little special education students who are precious walk around with this like coffee cart and they bring coffee to teachers. That's golden. <laughs> it's amazing because we survive off coffee. Not you, Doug, but we do. Do you survive off coffee? I survive off special education students learning that skill. <laughs> That's a big one for me, yeah. It was just really cute because they showed me pictures of the kids bringing around this cart and it was just so cute to see them really interacting with teachers and, and we used to do that a little bit at Hidden Valley but it was just an amazing <coughs> program that they do with their SPED kids so I thought it was really sweet. Um, also, Rick, I don't know how I'm going to do this without you. Nah. <laughs> Rick Beebe's been amazing. He's been an amazing part of USD for many, many years and I will miss him terribly, especially if he doesn't build me a bathroom. <laughs> and Noemi's a great president, so it's going to be a wonderful ride here as we go through our journey for the remainder of the year. So thank you guys so much for everything you do. Thank you. All written communications have been provided. Moving on to the consent calendar. F1, are there any, is there anything that wants to be pulled for separate consideration? Uh, request to pull item J2. J2. Pulled or an explanation? What would you like? Pulled and separate vote, please. Okay. Anything else? I need a motion. A motion to approve the balance minus J2. Oh, second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 5 0. Moving on to J2. All right, so this, as I understand it, is a request for $26,730 to, to enter into an agreement for a study for our district and the high school district 
um, regarding transportation needs and to look for a way to do a potential cooperative transportation model. Um, so I, I understand that we're currently utilizing EUHSD transportation services for some of our transportation needs, and I, I fully understand um, the need to expand this, but can we please address just a couple of questions? First of all, what are we going to get out of this study? We already know what our transportation needs are and where are we headed with this? Are we looking at um, doing joint use with the high school transportation department? If so, how would our contract, because it seems to me like we're entering into a situation. Are we going to respect their CSEA contract or our CSEA contract? Can we get some more details? Yeah. So first, the output of this, the outcome that we would expect would be, is this something that will be not only financially beneficial to both parties, both districts, but also are they going to be able to provide the service that we need for our students? Confident in both being uh, yes, beneficial to both and that their service would be provided. They're already in the same neighborhoods where our students live. Um, they're already a school district who is, this is by trade, this is what they do uh, every day already for former students of ours. Uh, and so we expect the, the outcome to be good, but we want to do the study to make sure that if we do go down this road and then that road we go down, pun intended, <clears throat> would be to do uh, some sort of a, a joint uh, powers authority, if you will, so that we would uh, be actually paying them to be our vendor to provide transportation. And so we would then, in that case, because we're paying them as a customer, we'd be following their CSCA contract. With They would be managing their employees. We would just be providing them a fee for that. Um, we probably would also provide money towards capital investments, towards buses and, and things of that nature in order to get this started. Uh, but then they would manage the program, their employees with their existing transportation. It's quite robust there. We don't have our own transportation department. We've always had to contract out. Uh, and so it seems to make sense at first, but this is why we want to do the study to make sure that it truly does uh, benefit both parties and provide us the service that we require for our students. We used to have our own transportation department. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah probably way before my time. Yep, it is right. quite costly to start our own, mm -hmm. uh, including having to have facility space for that and all of the um, investment in that. And so um, it really, it probably would be outside of our, our reach financially to start our own transportation department. But, but there was a reason town, we went away from it. It got too expensive. So, okay, so go, go John. No, I was just thinking, um, now that Doug brought it up, the fact that they only have a limited number of high schools. I mean, they'd have to expand their mm -hmm. services pretty pretty much and might end up with the same problems that our transportation companies are currently having and finding enough people to drive the buses and they'd probably have to put on more buses to accommodate all of our schools. So I believe that they would be able to hire from our existing contractors who are local drivers, but also there's an efficiency here in that they are in these neighborhoods mm -hmm. uh, where our kids are. And so uh, certainly there's going to be some bracketing of uh, not necessarily intermingling the youngest of our students, but our older middle school students can ride a bus with some of the high school students. And so there's, there's the potential for an efficiency of routing uh, that isn't available to any other contractor uh, that, that the contractor we're currently with is only in our town providing transportation because we've hired them to do so uh, but this other agency is already doing these bus routes uh, within our city uh, and so there we would hope to see that there w that's what the study would show us well I'm, I mean when I read the the uh, presentation in the agenda I thought it made sense mm -hmm. obviously the, the other thing was that it occurred to me, too, that I heard that the state was going to give grant money to school districts to buy electric, electric buses. buses. That so they can't power. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing it's not cold here. <laughs> I can't uh, control what the state wants us to do with our electricity and, and buses and other vehicles, but uh, that is a requirement that's coming down the road here uh, shortly 
Um, but again, we would um, infuse this, this, and that's part of the study, be what would be our initial investment to make sure that there's enough buses uh, to provide this service. Yeah. And, you, and you have to understand, we, we're t the students who we transport are really our, our medically fragile students. Yeah. And so those need bus attendance. So there is an economy of, you know, you've got wheelchairs, you've got um, people who need to be able to monitor the students in there. So there could be a cost um, savings there. I think the bottom line is yeah. it's worth a study. No, it's worth That's the study. And I also think I should study. add yeah, that. To see if it's feasible. Right. And, and if we have a choice between hiring a, a private contractor and hire or hiring another CSA operated bus operation, I think the choice is obvious uh, there if we get the opportunity to if do so. Work, yeah. So we want to make sure that this is going to be a good opportunity for us. And if it is, I think we'd be very proud to uh, work with another school district. Mark? Yeah, just uh, I think what's been stated in, in my interpretation all along was that the study will provide the answers to everything that's yeah. being yeah. brought up here at the DICE. And because of that, I motion to approve staff recommendation. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed. And one opposed. So it passes so. forward. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what the study's for. All right, moving to M1 okay. Business okay. Services, McSkinsey Scott Investment Update. Our, we can't get our kids to school in time. <laughs> All right, uh, so our ongoing adventure uh, that started way back in October of 22 uh, when we were able to we receive a donation from Mackenzie Scott, the amount of $16 million. We've been updating the board and the public, um, and we have a new um, update, if you will. Another thing has happened. Uh, in this adventure, but I want to take uh -huh. us through, as I always do, and, and catch anybody up that's not aware and is hearing about this for the first time. As I said in October of uh, 2022, we received uh, the donation in the amount of $16 million and was deposited in our county treasury. Uh, and then later in April uh, of 2023, the board adopted our new investing policy that we did not have uh, when we received the money. And this allows us to then explore investment opportunities and certainly we presented that with our financial advisor here in October uh, to our board here. Uh, and the board took action to approve the uh, investment option that we described through our financial advisor. And then the news thing, uh, in, on December 19th, 2023, we actually executed that investment, which means that the treasury bonds, all those investments as we presented, those were purchased. And so now we are in that investment. So let's just look at what that means and what that, the summary of that investment. So first of all, um, in just the kind of the nuances of how many bonds and how that all factors uh, evenly distributed, the money we actually invested 15,984,210. That was the closest we could get to 16 million uh, without going over uh, with uh, the treasuries we were able to buy. And that nets us an annual uh, amount of $608,125. And I have over here on the right, because it's a, um, a multitude of smaller investments that add up to that total investment. And that provides us every month with cash flow. And also, I know we're going to ask, the interest rate is 3.83. <clears throat> so we'll get ahead of that. Uh, so let's talk about how that all kind of plays out, the uh, monthly cash flows and, and all of that. <clears throat> First, though, the money as it sat in our county treasury for the last many months since October, uh, has accumulated uh, $536,000 in interest at, and again, this is at a lower rate than what we were able to get uh, through investment. Uh, and that fluctuates all the time with the county treasury. They're always a little bit higher right now as interest rates are up. But as interest rates go down, as we know that they're going to and already are going down, uh, our investment is locked in at that interest rate, at that annual uh, cash flow of $608,000. Uh, that money that was already earned uh, interest in our county treasury remains in the county treasury. The only thing that was transmitted to our investment holding account 
was the 16 uh, million or the 15 million 983,000. All future interest earnings now will be deposited back into that investment account that we've opened with First Citizens Bank. And that also gives us the opportunity, as you saw that monthly cash flow as money comes in, if we don't necessarily need that cash right now to cover any expenses, uh, we are able to then reinvest that in more short term investments within the bank uh, in order to grow that money even more. And that's just an opportunity that we have while it's in our holding account with First Citizens Bank. And so our intent is then to earn as much money as possible with this until we need to pull it out and use it uh, to cover any expenses uh, for whatever we may do with that. We'll have a conversation about that in a later slide. So Fund 17. Uh, and we wanted to make sure, and I know that uh, everybody, we always have this interest to make sure that it, we're very uh, clear and transparent with what we're doing with all of our dollars, uh, very certainly with uh, this fund. And because it's a, a special a donation, it's a special revenue, we're actually able to create or put it into a different fund within our uh, general fund overall called Fund 17. Uh, fund 1742, to be more specific, uh, it's created specifically for this. Nothing else will be in that, no other ins and outs. Everything in that fund will be related to the Mackenzie Scott donation and the interest earned on it uh, from there. When we were to make uh, expenses or charge money towards that or have need to use it for something that we've decided to do with it uh, as the board, then we would transfer that out. But what we're going to use then also is very uh, specific accounting codes that are made just for every dollar for this. And so then you would be able to track uh, when the money comes in, the revenue comes back in to our county treasury account into Fund 17, and as it moves into wherever we have to put it to cover wherever that expense may live. Uh, and that's just a matter of, of the accounting codes in order for there to be full transparency. Also, when we do our inter, uh, um, we call those things, we just did one, first interim, second interim, our adopted budget, so those where we provide, we create that big book, our budget book, it'll have its own page. Uh, in that book now too. Um, and so Mackenzie Scott will, for as long as we're keeping that money and investing it uh, and have it, we'll, we'll have a page in that book uh, so everybody will be able to see all of the activity that's happened to it since the previous uh, interim uh, or adopted budget. Are there any questions so far on some of this? Okay. The, you know, and, and we all were kids, I, I think I did this and we sometimes will take our children to the bank to open their first bank account when they got like that $100 from grandma for Christmas and they bring that $100 and they deposit it into the bank account. The interest we've earned already in the treasury is kind of like this is our starting money that we're opening that Fund 17 account with. So uh, last I, I spoke with you, we talked about some potential use of those interest proceeds of the $608,000 here. Uh, we did talk about some of the things that are in the, the big moves from the framework for the future. Uh, certainly that's up there, and, and this is that where I was hoping for some conversation. We also, an idea that came up last meeting, and, and it seemed to, to really catch on with, uh, with our board, uh, is uh, we call, I'm just calling it school grant committee, something we still have to kind of flesh out the details on, but where potentially schools could pro uh, propose uses for the money, and that a committee made up of um, certain would be members of the board, cabinet, uh, teachers, stakeholders, st you know, all the different stakeholders in our community uh, to then, you know, award grants based on those proposals in a kind of a competitive process that could be fun and kids can learn from uh, and, and just in the experience of in the, in the world of, that we all live in where we need to present something, a job interview or whatever. So it's a real world opportunity for some of for our schools to, to, to use to teach our students that process and compete to uh, get grants that they could do some cool things at their schools. And I really wanted to hear, is that still uh, of interest to our board? Uh, does that sound like a direction that we want to go down as we can, and then we can start kind of working out what the details of that would look like um, and how to make sure that that works and is fair and equitable for all? Any, is everybody good with that? Anything? Well, I, my first um, consideration would be make sure we can fund the the, pro the uh, priorities we already have, and as as this as the backup, and then if we do have the extra money, then then I'm fine with different things like this. But I just want to make sure we're 
able to keep funding our priorities, especially in our LCAP and different things that we've set as a priority. And if we need to use this money towards that, I think that should be our first priority with it and then use it for other, other great ideas that we've come up with. That's the thought. Um, <laughs> when you asked if there were any any questions, yes, and I wasn't ready okay. because I'm I'm a little disappointed with the interest rate. I yeah. don't think it was is as it was presented by mm -hmm. our financial advisor. And December nineteenth, the interest rates were pretty high. So what's the term on this? Five years. This is a five year is investment, it in so it's one? based on the five so, year okay. term. I see as it went out further. I thought we were going to do laddering, like some at a shorter term and then. Well, and that's kind of why you see the monthly cash flows as they are. They're, there's many different uh, investments all within, and that, and, but it's all, all of them for the five years. So you're telling me this is what the average interest rate is across rate all of those, yes. Because I have to tell you, I actually got an offer from an online bank that, okay. that's well known for five point. 30% for, uh, for a nine month period. Now okay. I know that's a short term. Right, shorter term interest rates are higher right now and they were at the time of investment. And I think during that, I didn't bring that slide where they had the uh, interest yields based on different terms. Uh, certainly it's higher and then it, and it starts to go lower and lower as the further it gets out. Um, so we kind of found trying to find that sweet spot where we can have a five years of, of sure money coming in, sure revenue coming in, uh, because certainly as interest rates drop, uh, we would get to a point where probably in three years, we wouldn't even be able to get that high of an interest rate uh, if we started then. Well, if we have shorter term investments though too, then our return is going to drop just when we reinvest the money. Sure. So. And so that's, yeah, so it's a five, that's why it's the dif difference in maybe what you're seeing, it's the five year interest rate specifically for those I investments. And, it, and also too, our investment policy and what we spoke about. We invested these in, in, in government bonds. And not to say and to it, it, about an online bank or any, oh, we, we use a, the lowest FDIC risk, the maximum. lowest risk possible investment for a public agency. Um, and, and that was something of concern, not only for our board, but our county treasurer uh, in taking this money out of the treasury and their job is to protect uh, and, and taking a risk just removing it from that shelter, you know, protection of the county treasury. Uh, but we felt that the risk was still very similar in the government bond market as opposed to many other investments where we can make probably even bigger returns but with a much bigger risk. Mm. So it's a conservative approach to make sure that we protect this money. Um, but yes, we're giving away a little bit, obviously, uh, potential for interest earnings if we were in a higher risk investment. So First Citizens Bank, I'm not familiar. It's just uh, one of the many banks here. And we shopped around because make sure that the, where the fees were structure was low and the service were provided and they actually were the most responsive uh, bank that we talked to in order to um, hold this money for us. Uh, but now it's with the investment. So it's not even in that account. It's actually uh, in the investments, but the interest proceeds will go back into the First Citizens account and they'll live there, uh, and then we can create with them money market accounts or other ways for it to continue to earn interest there. Now, what we're gonna do though is that we'll always be measuring what the county treasury can yield versus what we can yield through First Citizens Bank. If it's gonna earn us more to put our first few months of cash flow that we, re revenue we receive back into the treasury, and I think right now it might be, we would put that money into the county treasury to start earning a higher interest rate there. If we can get a higher interest rate maybe in a couple years from now at, in the bank at a shorter term investment there, and what's available there, then we'll keep it there. So we're gonna, we only have an opportunity with this money because it's out of the treasury to make that decision, but we're gonna make sure that we land that uh, revenue where it's gonna continue to earn the most money uh, and continue to build up. Now, the way that works over the course of a year, we might have expenses that we charge to it, but we might be able to use based on what our own district's overall cash flow is to be able to cover those expenses and then leave that money in the best investment possible for that time period. But then we'll at usually part of towards the end of the year, we'll need to bring that money over uh, and then so that we can cover those expenses as we balance and close our books uh, for the year. So this is gonna be something where we're constantly gonna be measuring what's the best place for every dollar that comes out. Best being best return, 
and safest. And we have the two options in our investment policy, the investment we're currently in, with government you know, secured bonds, or back into the county treasury. There are reputable brick and mortar banks that are, I think, are paying better short term rates than this for larger amounts of money. So and well, as we're gonna start generating all this interest, we can be exploring even that too. But before I would ever do that, I'd come back before the board and talk about that, have our financial advisor come in and explore that, make sure that we all understand it, and then uh, seek approval from the board before we ever were to put it anywhere outside of what we already have set up within our investment policy and board action. Do we ever uh, do re requests for proposals from other financial advisors? We can. Mm. We didn't. We used the same financial I advisor know. we used for our bond program. I know. Uh, and they've been very helpful, and, and we've had a lot of success. And we're comfortable with them. And I know, we're the, for instance, we're, we're having our audit, audit report yeah. tonight as well, and we did change auditors just for a different perspective, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. Sometimes you get mm -hmm. complacent oh, yeah. and comfortable. Yeah. Oh, I don't like and being comfortable. And this was with, <laughs> with this type of investment, it's not very common for public agencies to be able to do investments. I mean, mm -hmm. 16 this, million it, dollars, it's, and right. I know that's, yeah. It's very, so there, there, it's very limited in the expertise, and that's what we had to work with a different arm of that company. Of but now we're talking yeah. about uh, not such large, I mean, yeah. they're large amounts, but not these ma millions. Right. Certainly. So. And, and Piper Sandler has, an, has like uh, Dr. Ibarra mentioned, an arm of their, of their organization that specializes in public agency investments. And so that's who we were working with uh, through this, not the normal bond advisor, but the part of their organization that focuses on public agencies. They actually have a specialist that's worked with county treasuries uh, for varying degrees of success. Some counties have not allowed public agencies yeah. to invest outside of the treasury, uh, and that was a concern for ours, but they had a specialist that has had success in working with county treasuries to create that opportunity for those different agencies, be it cities, counties, or other school districts throughout the state. And so it just felt at that time that this was the, they had, they had the best for us at that time prior without doing an RFP. Now we could definitely go forward and do an RFP for any future financial advising services. That's absolutely something we can do any time. So the county treasury, uh, where do they, are they the, they're holding on to the money or do they invest it then for us? They, they do investments, but they have to keep those funds liquid. Because at any time, districts, you know, they have well, to have that. Fun. So that, that's why it fluctuates. But how can they pay us? I know because yeah. they had to give us the $16 million, exactly. right? But, but how can they pay us interest then? Uh, well, it's probably in more like money market liquid. accounts, things like that, that they might yeah. use that, that bear interest. And certainly, we've all taken advantage of the opportunity with higher interest rates right now. The county yeah. treasury has... I would say exponentially higher interest rates recently than they would nor they normally have had, and we expect those. They tell us they're going to fall back down as interest rates start to drop as well, uh, yeah. because they're not chasing the highest interest rate yields either. Because again, for liquidity and for security, the county uh, treasurer I spoke with him actually a couple months ago, very proud of the safety and security that they have our money in San Diego County. I know there's been stories of maybe neighboring counties or nearby counties where it hasn't been protected as much uh, and a lot of money has been, public money has been lost and our county treasury is committed to not. Uh, and so the interest rates are not gonna be as lucrative there, uh, but the money's gonna be liquid and safe. And that's, but this, we've ma we mirrored that in the investment that we went forward in, you know, out of the treasury um, and how we did this as well so that it's as safe and secure as it can be even in the treasury. Thank you. So if I could, I think your question was, uh, do we want to look at using some of this interest income for the school grant committees for some larger projects? Uh, and it just seems to me that that might go to the mm, providing additional voice to teachers that uh, EAAA brought up today where they would be able to you know, maybe in the same fashion as they do with the um, Escondido Education Foundation, Gala coming up on uh, Friday, 
February 9th. Um, buy your tickets now. Buy your tickets now. Um, and so I uh, remain in support of you of having those funds available for specialized projects, either at the school level or at the classroom level, mm -hmm. um, maybe with an emphasis on the classroom level, and, and just putting together a committee, I'm not sure of the makeup, and, and a criteria mm -hmm. for, for those grants. You know, maybe seed money for doing things really innovative or uh, whatever whatever it, it is. Um, but having a little bit more money than, for example, the Education Foundation mm -hmm. can provide, but that same framework, mm -hmm. I, I think, would be really valuable. Yeah. Any of the other members? Uh, Thoughts on this? Mark? I'm in agreement with the things that have been stated. I mean, obviously, we want to make sure that our main priorities are taken care of uh, and then the residual um, give the, the sites and those that have the best knowledge of the needs uh, a voice. And I, we trust that the district staff will put together a package of a fair and transparent process, and I think it'll be great. I can imagine a, a board meeting in the future where we have award recipients coming in and we have them up here and I'm taking pictures of them and, and, and they're getting their, their grants awarded and we're celebrating this. It's an exciting future that this gives us an opportunity for. Mr. Yes. President Houston or Ms. Harper, I haven't heard from you anything I'm there. In, I'm in agreement with the board. Okay. I, I, like okay. Every, I like everything that you guys have done and thank you for the work. Okay. Okay. And maximizing interest rates. Yes. Whatever we need to do to make sure we're maximizing that. That's right. With In the safest with as way possible. Risk as possible. Yeah. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to be on the news for having made a bad investment <laughs> and lost all of our money. That's what you can blame me. <laughs> <laughs> you know it doesn't work that way, Ms. Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Moving on to N1, our 2022-23 audit report. Okay, we have uh, Mr. Peter Glenn going to come up. He's from Niagara Niagara, as mentioned, uh, our uh, auditor. And he's going to provide us with the audit report, a uh, summary of that from the 2223 fiscal year. And this actually would close out that year. Uh, so here we go. Mr. Glenn, take it away. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good evening, members of the board and cabinet and audience. Um, so uh, we'll talk real briefly about 22-23, uh, the audit report, and uh, the results of the audit report. The um, Really, the three things that I thought I would bring up are really that, that the audit does primarily. It um, provides reasonable assurance on the financial statements, and it does that through uh, what's known as an audit opinion. That's covered in, in page one, so I'll start there. And the audit opinion uh, expressed there is that the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the district. So what that means is um, we took those unaudited actuals that were approved by the board back in September of last year, 2023. We performed audit procedures on those, and um, then what you see before you either in PDF form or the, the book that I've got in front of me, those are the audited statements. So those are the, the ones that we express that opinion upon. Um, also what the audit does is it meets the compliance requirements of the state and the federal government. The state every year comes out with a K through 12 audit guide and um, they're just finalizing actually the 23-24 audit guide. So we're awaiting that uh, anxiously. But the 22-23 audit guide was used to audit the district, perform procedures. I can think of uh, on page 76 and 77 of the hard copy, not the PDF if you're looking at that, um, those go through all of the state audit requirements that we went through. Uh, one of the new ones had to do with um, transitional kinder. That was a, a big one last year and going forward. And there'll certainly be uh, a couple of new ones uh, elope is, is a big one that's going to be for 23-24. But anyway, staying with 22-23, uh, we audited that program or those procedures through class sizes. 
and uh, didn't have any uh, audit findings when it came to any of those 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 state areas, I should say. Um, and then as far as the federal programs, we had almost a handful of federal programs we looked at. We looked at the Education Stabilization Fund, Title I, Special Ed, and then CACFP, which is a food service program. So we looked at all those, and those were those were um, without any kind of uh, audit finding or exception. Um, so as I said, that's the, 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 the second thing that the audit provides. And the, the final thing is kind of linked with that first thing, and that is the financial statements need to be presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles um, as defined by the Governmental uh, Accounting Standards Board, or GASB. So the audit uh, enables that to, to, be, um, to be proper, I would say, <laughs> to meet that requirement so that the, <clears throat> so, sorry, so that the state controller, the CDE, your county office, all accept the report in, in that form. Um, so I basically just kind of like to close there that the audit uh, was completed. We appreciate the cooperation of the district, of uh, Andrew McGuire and Michelle Cagle in fiscal. So we appreciate all of the uh, cooperation. And of course, we, we also dabbled in a lot of different departments too. I mentioned food service earlier, special education, Title I. So a lot of the directors we ended up talking to for that as well. So we appreciate all their um, cooperation. Do we have any questions? Hi. Um, I had a couple questions. Um, I really liked what you had said in there about, you know, the audit is more to make sure they're checking everything off, but it doesn't really talk about um, the internal control over compliance. So I, I appreciate that distinction of, you know, even though it looks good, I'm, not that I'm accusing you of anything <laughs> <laughs> ever, but um, I'm just saying I, I appreciate that that's the distinction that we're charged with making sure we have the responsibility of. Um, so when you find, like in the end of the report, when you find these deficiencies, how long do you talk to the district about that and to make those changes or make any corrections that they find? Um, well, it kind of depends on what it is. Some mm -hmm. of the some of the things, let's say we come out in the springtime because our audit cycle is March, April, May. Um, you know, that's our site testing and our um, internal control um, walkthroughs. Okay. And then, um, so if, if something comes up there, we say, um, hey, you didn't pass your board policy on independent study. There's a new one, let's just say, mm -hmm. um, which was the case, I think, last year or the year before. Um, hey, you still have time to fix this. Boom, it's done. Um, a, another one is maybe the attendance records. Uh, you missed a kid on this day. Um, okay, you can fix it. Hey, there's an amendment window. Let's fix it. Um, so, you know, we work with the district when it comes to that. Um, so it's not a gotcha. Right. Um, there are certain things where uh, the, the boat left the harbor or whatever, whatever expression you want to use. Uh, like with the LCAP, you know. There had to be a public hearing. Um, right. It had to be on that date. Missed it, so that was one where okay, you know, that that couldn't be uh, adjusted or, or corrected. So it's in the report. So so it kind of depends. Hope that answers that. Yeah. Okay, no, that actually helps a lot. And then um, the other thing that seems to come up and it seems to come up every year is like ASB funds. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean every, I mean we've seen it. Uh, and so do you, and this might be outside of the scope of your audit, but do you have, have you seen any other districts and what they do that might, we could implement other measures in place or new technologies or something like that? I mean, I know it's a lot of $2 and $1 here you're trying to collect, and but it seems to come up again and again year after year. Yeah, I mean, and that's pretty common. Um, you know, I don't want to minimize it because we definitely want to see those controls as, as good as they can be. Um, it's a pretty common finding, and um, I, I feel like it's it's partially because of turnover. Um, it's partially because of maybe a lack of understanding of how important internal controls are um, at that level. Um, I know that a lot of times, you know, maybe what's easier is done rather than you know just here, let's take that donation and put it in this bucket and this hat over here and we'll count the cash later. Right. You know what I mean? Something like that. Or we'll just collect this and 
you know, not do our tally sheets or something like that because that's too much of a pain, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. little things like that um, can happen. So it's, you know, but it's good to have those reminders. Um, so just kind of like constant reminders and, and, and trainings um, seem to improve it, but ASB is always an area uh, where, you know, you've got that, that issue, I would say. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, Ms. Ms. Harper, <clears throat> I wanted to speak to that too. We have uh, an accountant in fiscal assigned to working with our ASBs, oh, okay. so they constantly have oversight, but also guidance. But then to the point of guidance, beyond doing the audit, working with us on what they go through and find, and then you know help us to fix or you know report, um, we also reach out to them, they're available to us, and so when we have a, something that comes up, like, hmm, not sure how to account for that, uh, what fund we should use, you know, any kind of those kind of questions, we're able to contact uh, Nigro and Nigro and, and, and Mr. Glenn or one of his associates, um, then it guides us and advises us on what's the um, correct or best way for us to do whatever it is that we're trying to do, most specifically fiscally um, on that. So their services goes beyond just auditing the books, but also providing us that guidance as well. That's really helpful. Are we ready to for a motion? All right, move to approve the 22-23 audit report. All second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Thank you. And two, business services amendment to the ICOC bylaws. I feel like every meeting I'm doing all the talking. <coughs> we love it. <coughs> so this is uh, our, our board oversees uh, our uh, it is, uh, Independent Citizens Oversight Committee and the Independent Citizens Oversight Committee, ICOC for short, oversees um, what we do with our bond program, uh, how we spend the money and making sure that it aligns with what we told the voters when we passed the bond. Tonight's uh, item is as we continue to go through and make sure that we're following all of the rules and regulations that govern this, uh, we found that we needed to update our bylaws to um, include that there needs to be one member on our ICOC that is an active uh, member of a senior citizens organization. Uh, we do in fact have someone on our ICOC now that fits this bill, um, but we needed to update our bylaws to show that that's a requirement. So in the future, if that um, gentleman were to leave the ICOC, we would be required to go find a replacement for him. So this is just as simple of just updating our bylaws uh, in order for us to um, add that there. We're also eliminating the alternate member uh, they only serve when there's no quorum. Um, it just hasn't been something that has helped us. We've have had some meetings where we haven't been able to get to quorum. We're required to have one a year. We have many a year. Uh, but by scheduling them uh, almost every month, it gives us the opportunity that if we can't meet quorum one time, that we still have a meeting shortly thereafter. Uh, so tonight's motion is just our uh, action uh, being recommended is to update the bylaws to add that uh, senior citizens organization member. What, what senior citizens organization is it doing? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, so it's, there's not really necessarily a specific senior citizens organization here in town, but many of our organizations in town like Rotary or Kiwanis, um, they have <laughs> a variety seniors. of people that might meet the bill of a senior citizen. And so our ICOC talked about this, deliberated it, and thought that um, we have one of our members who participates quite actively in Kiwanis, uh, Mr. Rybeck and that he said he feels he is the senior citizens member for our ICOC. So I'm sorry, that I didn't mean that as a gotcha question. <laughs> no, I, well, I don't think it was a gotcha question, but everybody uh, likes to laugh when, we start, when I have to talk about that particular issue, so. Because? <laughs> do so I do well, there's it. Oasis, <coughs> that's a senior, is it? What is it? Oasis. Oasis. Well, and that's something that we currently have a member, but when we need to replace them, I'm going to need some help on where to find all of those kind of Coming groups. up with a senior citizens yeah. organization. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Rotary and Kiwanis, that's a good place to look and, for and senior citizens. Yeah, and as a member of Rotary, as well as Dr. Filia and Dr. Ibarra, we know that, that there is a wealth of opportunity for folks that participate in that that can help us in any of these positions. <laughs> Here on when I'm ICC. one of the younger members of a Rotary Club, that's saying a oh, lot dear. right there. Oh, dear. 
one of the younger members. Luckily, Andy's there <laughs> to give us all CPR when needed. Yeah, <laughs> the safety uh, coordinator. Move approval. Let's go. Let's go. Any Second motion. Uh, move approval of the amendment. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Passes 5 0. And we're going to go to N3. Abolish the assistant principal classification. I'll move approval. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 5 0. I think we knew what that was about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You did great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 01. Board policy, first reading. This is um, just uh, to update and clarify language based on new law for our board policy. And this is just the first read. Any questions? Uh, I don't have a question. I have a request because I usually I leave the board policies for the last to read because usually they're minor changes. That's huge changes. One or two words. And uh, not only that, the, but there are three of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I still don't understand why there are three of them that basically address the more or less the same things. Mm -hmm. Slightly different wording and so all So we come them. back for a second reading. Uh, well, yeah. I'd like the, the chance to spend some more time because uh, I, had, I had some questions just beginning to go through them. But I appreciate the color-coded copies because I was trying to do it by hand, <laughs> and that's very tedious. So, thank you. And if that is uh, agreeable to everyone, absolutely, we'll bring it back on the next meeting. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Q one. Board members and uh, reports. Mark. Just be brief tonight. Uh, just want to thank the AAA and representation for our good meeting today. Uh, it's always good to get together, hear uh, different points of view, and so I want to express publicly that we appreciate and cherish that relationship and the opportunity. So uh, it's been a while, and it was good to, to start the new year off with that group. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Zest. I will not be brief. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, I attended the eSports championship um, night at Hidden Valley. It was fantastic. I don't know if any of you have seen the new room at Hidden Valley for the eSports. They had it all decked out. They had uh, like the auditorium and different areas all set up for it. And they had a live streamer. So someone like commenting on all the games. It was great. It was a great setup. Uh, Hidden Valley did an excellent job um, setting it all up, having food for everyone, having snacks and the enthusiasm was high um, I attended the my favorite event of the year which is the bike giveaway with Joan at uh, Juniper Elementary where they gave all the third graders a bike um, so I wanted to thank the Sunrise Rotary for that and then also there was two Escondido police officers there that talked about bike and helmet safety so it, it's always a great event um, I wanted to welcome the new CSEA board and we're excited to be working with you again for another year. It's going to be great. Um, I wanted to recognize uh, Leonard joining the Kiwanis Club. That's exciting and lots of great uh, community involvement we'll have from you <laughs> as well. Senior program. Um, I, <laughs> so thank you for representing our district. Um, I wanted to also recognize uh, Marty Horanic, who retired this year, was a former board member, um, and a uh, job well done w serving this district and a well-deserved retirement. So I wanted to give a shout out to him. And then um, today I attended with Dr. Ibarra a tour of Bear Valley uh, Middle School. It was very calm on campus. I got to see the AVID classrooms, track a um, ALC, the robotics um, room and then also some of the students taking their iReady tests so it was good to see and how they were all doing it on their um, iPad um, and um, it, w it was great it was a great uh, campus I also wanted to ask and see if there was any support for creating an ad hoc committee from the board um, for the budget before we have our study session with the board um, to, to really drill down on some of the items that we need to kind of work on for the budget. Are you looking at me? No, I'm not looking <laughs> at anyone besides myself because I'd like to <laughs> be on like it. To, yeah. 
But if there's any support, I would I would like to have it. But if not. Zesty, uh, just to clarify, what would be the purpose? Because it seems to me like on the budget, especially in a year like this one is shaping up to be, we all need to be on that in depth. I just, I don't know if, uh, if uh, the scope of our study session will be able to cover it all. That That's my, because there's going to be a lot to it, and I just don't think one board study session, if we can, if we can make a dent in it as an ad hoc committee, and then present it to the board so there's more that we can really um, discuss as a whole board instead of too many little details to get through. So what I was thinking, that's one of the reasons I'm going tomorrow to school services budget presentation uh, to prepare mm -hmm. for that and to, to find out what's coming. Right. Even though it's not set in stone yet, it won't be until the final, mm -hmm. the final presentation. Yeah. They're always full of surprises. But um, I, I think Doug has a point. You know, we're all interested. Th there will be there's two board. There's two board uh, study sessions. And we're, I think, because of, of the importance of this, we just want you to be aware that we have a February study session mm -hmm. and a March study session that we have and scheduled we'll that could, we could focus those yeah. on the budget. And there will be handouts <coughs> from tomorrow's event mm -hmm. and we could share them with the rest of the board to familiarize themselves with what's coming what's predicted so I don't know if, if anyone I mean I'd say yes except that I what Doug, Doug said well it's not that the board wouldn't be discussing it but I just think there's just so much and I think we don't get into it enough as a board, and I'd really like to get into it en uh, more, and I don't think that's going to happen at a study session. We'll have to make I a study think, session longer. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be important that we, first of all, as a board, maybe make the personal commitments to the greatest degree we can to, even if we're not going to the session tomorrow, uh, there will be different recordings that will be put out and to really study those documents in advance. And yeah, if we need to make that board study session longer um, uh, as a result of the needs or if we need to schedule another one we need to do that because this is right now the budget is too important to not have thorough a thorough understanding of that would be my thought I'm fine with that too I just I think we need to spend more time than we normally do on no, it I think mm. we're in agreement Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we may be having a longer night than normal. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Or maybe we can start earlier. Or yes, exactly. Start early, earlier than later. Right. Yeah. True. Yes. So okay. Tell you later. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Anything else, Dusty? No, I think that was it. Okay, done. Um, uh, again, just want to thank AAA um, for the communication and acknowledge the fact that. Bo going both ways, we need to improve, always be looking at ways to improve communication between employee groups, parent groups, with everybody. Um, so thank you for that overriding thought. Again, congratulations to Mr. Beebe, uh, uh, and thank you so much for your many decades of dedication to this district. Um, uh, no real report other than to just remind everybody Friday night February 9th uh, the Escondido Education Foundation um, gala and auction at the oh. Elks Lodge uh, down on South Escondido Boulevard it is it's as always it's going to be a great program oh. I'm sorry and Mark is going to be putting up something at his house for auction, and I'm just thrilled with that. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to come up with a new a new shtick this year because it's getting old. Um, and anyway, um, but just want to encourage that because the funds from the Education Foundation are really well used, and so I would just encourage everybody to purchase tickets uh, for that event, come to that event. It is a great time, and if you 
don't really have time to come, that's okay. Just make a cash donation. Okay, so I also, that, that was my last event. Oh, by the way, this is our first meeting of the new year, so I wish everyone a happy new year and uh, a, a fortunate one. Uh, I was at the bike giveaway and it never gets old. And it never gets old when the kids find out that everyone's getting a bike, but I will tell you that as they awarded the first ones, the other kids were so excited for the winners. And that was so beautiful to see them applaud and get excited that a, their friend had won because of their, their essay. So, uh, and I think that stays new because it's not always the same school. So it doesn't get, oh, you're gonna get all gonna get a bike anyhow. They don't know that. So it's wonderful, yes. And um, let's see, oh, the de I, I represented the board at the de along with Doug at the design, oh yes, and Doug was there as well at the design team yesterday. There's some new plans coming down the pike which is, uh, still has to be digested. It's very, very new and uh, we didn't have a handout for it. So uh, it's hard for me. One thing we talked about is all the services that the that we offer in the district, and about a uh, quite a large grant, like, like uh, for the for the designated schools, and I think it's twenty one. No, no, twenty one schools. It's not all of our schools. That there's certain criteria that are eligible for the grant of about three hundred thousand dollars a year over a five year period and that it is, it, we would use it to enhance the programs that we already offer to, to amplify them. So I'm just, uh, I would like to suggest that we also evaluate the programs that we offer to make sure that we're not duplicating services and having so many that, that, uh, that aren't communicating. In fact, we, there was talk of having someone to hiring someone to oversee all of the programs and to implement this new grant program. So we'll see how that goes. It's under discussion right now with the design team. Um, and also, I'd like to um, welcome Noemi as the president of the CSE, the new president of the CSEA, and bid Rick Beebe a fond farewell, and thank you so much. It's been a, a real pleasure having you with the district for so long and you're you're certainly aren't entitled to your retirement so we we all wish you well thank you again for your service to the district and um oh, it was kimberly is israel who actually gave the present presentation yesterday and that's my report thank you joe and i also wanted to thank brandy and her team for allowing us to have this conversation earlier today very informative and we hope that we can move forward in some obviously two-way communications and getting everybody feeling a little bit more secure in all of that and Naomi congratulations can't wait to meet with you guys and uh, have another meeting with you guys and Rick thank you again for everything that you have done and uh, we appreciate everything that you've done uh, my only report is back in December I did go to Central School for their Christmas program. And I was able to uh, witness the TK through fifth doing the Christmas carols and it was unbelievable. It was standing room only and just the the whole the whole thing was done just fab I mean just fab I mean it was I'm, I'm I was ear to ear the whole time just watching these these young these young uh, students singing and having a good time, and it was absolutely great. So I want to thank Central School for that invitation, and uh, it was, uh, and that's it. Dr. Barrow. Yeah, I also echo the, the sentiment. Thank you, AAA, Brandy, and your e-board for the candid discussion. So that's, that's what it takes to, for us to, you know, keep moving in the same direction. And also echo, thank you, uh, welcome, Noemi, congratulations, and your new e-board. And Rick, uh, I know you're still with us through the end of the year, but uh, congratulations and thank you for your service as well. So in your role as triplet, uh, CSEA president. So, and a happy new year to everybody. Dr. Filia. 
just a, a reminder that our LCAP survey is open, and uh, the link is shared in the Family Communications when it closes on February 2nd, and that's open to everyone to be able to get some input on prioritization. Oh, me too. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I haven't said enough. Um, <laughs> Just excited to kind of report quickly that um, two of our big work construction projects are actually well underway. Uh, our solar phase two uh, is happening at many of our schools, uh, closing out one as we speak. Uh, and so we're excited to some of the possibilities that come with that, not just cost savings, but some of the other things we can do around that, providing extra shade or our playgrounds and things like that. And also, um, as we're, we're remodeling and improving our production kitchen, moving it from Mission Middle School to Rincon, providing us a much larger kitchen in order to continue to improve our menu offerings and really get more into cooking with, you know, scratch raw ingredients uh, to provide almost like home cooked meals that you would have at home but in our, in our schools for uh, breakfast and lunch. And if you participate in the after school program, we call it supper. I know I grew up having supper with my grandma and uh, so it's fun that we're able to offer uh, all those meals uh, made by our expert uh, chefs in our production kitchen and all of our school kitchens. Thank you, sir. And we're still cooking with gas. Cook it well, yeah. As, yeah. as long as we can. Yeah. yeah. Depends on what the state does next, who knows. Well, actually, th they, yeah. yeah. They want us to go away from gas now. Know, you have required for gas. Now it's don't do gas. I don't know. Perhaps we'll use nuclear fusion one day. <laughs> I, I was worried about that, about the kitchens and, and the burners, actually, and, and how if we were going to be forced when we renovate to, to change to electric. Well, not quite yet, but we're going to eventually have to do that, I'm sure. And that would be more what if you change out a kitchen. Well, it depends what the state says I we think have to do. The, I think the tide is turning a little bit on, the, on that. Well, keep me updated when you find out. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I'll you. let you know. I'll give you a call. Yes, ma'am. Interim HR. Hello. I just wanted to second the acknowledgement of Mr. Horanic and thank him for his years of service and wish him well in retirement. And then with the ratification of Ms. Cortez, all our admin positions and all our shifts have been completed and we are done. <laughs> Outstanding. Leonard. Just happy to support the meeting tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You did a fantastic job. Still <laughs> waiting. Still, we're still waiting for the uh, the automated voting, but I'm sure that you're getting on that really quick. So actually, we're on it. Yeah. Yeah. We're we would like to have a presentation <laughs> we'll, we, uh, at the next board meeting of the possibility for an automation system uh, that uh, President Houston is now requesting. Uh, no. Well, we found it in. Uh, yeah. I believe I believe it was first requested yeah. by. Uh, now we actually have a solution in board docs that we'd like to de uh, do a demo for the board and the public at the next meeting, and then if the board wishes to move forward, we can get that set up. <laughs> how how about the uh, the cell phone? What did you call them? You said to look into the cell phone oh, purses. Uh, yeah. Oh, oops. Almost. We'll have an update on that as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There's actually, the, I, so I got our an next advertisement meeting. For, for those. Oh. Next meeting? Yes. Are we adjourned? I need to And then announce we have it. to go back yeah. to. Yeah. So our next meeting will be, uh, we'll have a board workshop held on Saturday, February 3rd, 2024 at 9 a.m. And then our next regular scheduled board meeting will be held on Thursday, February 8th at 7 p.m. here at the Escondido Union School District Carolyn Gilbert Education Center. Are we, do we need to go back to closed session? Yep. No. Okay. We'll not be on it. And so, any objections? This meeting is adjourned. Yeah. Now on to the next right, meeting. Call to order the Facilities Corporation. So we're going to call to order the...